Oh, that's awesome! Hey everybody, Louis Skibo here at Power Mods. All the snow is gone. It's that time of year. We're probably going to be hopping on the four wheelers and the ATV soon. But you know what? We've got this old Polaris XLT here. I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation with this Evans waterless coolant. Now, when you're running this coolant in your sled, it doesn't mean that it's going to run cooler. It just means that if you're running your cooling system and something happens to it and it overheats, that the chances of you doing damage to your sled are minimized. And that's an important thing because when these engines heat up, they heat up fast and then problems start to happen with inside the cylinder. There's cavitation in around the uh, cylinder walls and that's when you get piston damage, cylinder scoring, and we don't want that to happen. So, what I figured I'd do, I take this XLT, which is running great by the way, you've seen the videos. I've had the head off this just at the start of the season and I've only probably put 10 miles on it since. We're going to do a compression test on it, make sure everything's good. The head gasket isn't leaking, we have no real problems with it. I'm not out here to blow this motor up today because I love this engine, everybody knows that. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to take all the coolant out of here, all that 50-50 mix, we're going to replace it, flush it properly, put this Evans waterless coolant in it. All right. Then I'm going to run this thing up to 260 degrees. We're going to measure it with our Digitron. Hopefully that'll work out for us. And we're going to measure it with a little heat gun as well. I have faith in this that we're not going to have any issues in our cylinders. We're going to pull the head off, take a look inside there, do a compression test afterwards. You know, if somebody makes a claim about a product, Power Mods has to check it out. Let's get her going. Most awesome device ever invented by man. The Liquivac. Oh, I'm telling you. Seriously, I love this thing. Suck away, baby. Suck away. I'm going to check the compression on this just to show you guys what it's running at right now. So this is the PTO side. Power takeoff, right? Keely's handy little compression tool. I broke mine. Now, here, I'll let you get on there. Switches off. So we're going to do the mag side now, see what we can come up with. So we're looking at about 140 on that one as well. It's pretty good. Pretty impressed with the old XLT. Now my whole idea is to just exclude the rear cooler in this and just loop the system just so it's just goes right around just through the motor and that is it. I don't want any extra cooling on this. I just don't need it for this experiment. Get these PSI pipes off here that sound so good. Taking all that fluid out of the head there right now. Don't pull on these too hard. Sometimes I just take the wrench and I just give it a little twist. There you go. I should have pulled the back cooler lines and sucked it out with the back. But sometimes you just have to live and learn. See all that 50 50 mix? Now, when doing a conversion from your 50 50 mix to the Evans coolant, you got to get every little bit of 50 50 mix out of there because the 50 50 is 50% water. 
You don't want the water in there because that's what creates a problem in your motor when things get really hot. So we got to get that out. It also expands under pressure. We don't want that either because Evans coolant runs basically at no pressure. Pressure doesn't start to build to but well over 300 degrees. So it's very important that you get the water out of there and the 50-50 mix. Now, good. Okay, now just to be entirely sure that I have no 50-50 mix left in there, I'm going to flush it with Evans coolant. Now the Evans coolant should go in. It's a little heavier than the 50-50 mix. It'll more or less push it out. So got a nice area here, nice and high, higher than the motor. It's going to go down through the pump. It's going to come through and it should flush out the old 50-50 mix right into this little container here. Let's just see if our little experiment works. I really want to make sure that there's no water left in there. I'm just going to put this whole bottle through it. The good thing about this as well, you know, this coolant isn't wasted now. If there is any water left in there, all I have to do is I just put it on a hot plate, leave it out in the sun, covered, and the water will just evaporate out of it and then I can reuse it again. This Evans coolant is good forever. You can pull it out of this sled, you can put it in another sled when you sell it, put in another one and it just keeps going and going. That's the good thing about it, it doesn't break down. So I'm just inserting my little Digitron T in it in the coolant system so we have a readout. I hope this works. I bought this off a fella online. It's an older style DT33. It's a three or four window display but it's old school. So We'll see if it works and if it doesn't we'll use our little heat gun with the laser on it there. Don't know if I'll be able to get my airbox back on. Probably not, but for the purpose of this experiment, it'll be just fine. I'm only going to run it at about quarter throttle until it gets to temperature. There you go. Now, for any of you wondering about the Polaris IQR build coming up, some cool things in the works right there. You know, I have that chassis over there that's a little twisted. We're going to keep that, but I think I just bought a new 2013 Polaris IQR. So hopefully in the next few weeks we'll go pick it up. So I'm just going to top this up here. I have to fill that whole head back up again. Perfect. Reinstalled cap. Check. Alright, good enough. Just going to have to take it all apart again anyway. I'm going to go inside, set up our heat gun. Make sure that this works, run it real quick. Get this baby going. Let's see how this works out. Sled's outside, I've got the belt off the clutches, we're going to run it up now, just, you know, that saves us from having to pick the back end up, maybe a, a bit of an unsafe environment. We're going to run this up to 260 degrees, it's going to be kind of crazy, and we've got the Digitron working, also got this handy little point and shoot here, temperature gauge, so let's give her a try.
260, 265 degrees I saw it peak at there. I'm telling you, it took a long time for it just to get to 220, which is when your engine is definitely overheating. You know, you'll see that red light come on if you're lucky. Sometimes I've had it where they don't come on and fluid is leaking out all over the place. So here, let's just release the... That's a 260 degrees. No kidding. Nothing. No pressure. Unbelievable. Let's just see what kind of tents we're looking at right now. 230. What's it like over here? 244. 235 it's down to now. All right. We'll let it cool right down and pull the head off and check it out. The crankcase is at about 124 degrees. Wasn't a good feeling. <laughs> Seriously, not a good feeling running it up to those temps. It's at 230 right now, man. I'm telling you, if you're on the trail and <laughs> If you're driving like that, you are going to have scored pistons, cylinder, something's going to have happened. Like, cracked, cracked head, cracked cylinder wall, something. I'll be interested to see what goes on. There you go. Let's get it inside. Like I said, man, I don't want to blow this motor up. I'm sure if we put 50-50 in there and ran it like that, there's no way. I've had it in seas. That would not, would not have lasted. Just kind of like what they always look like on this sled. I've tried jetting them down many times. What are we looking at for temps right now? Still 200 degrees on the cover. It's like right there, 100 and 196 down lower. The motor was cold last time. I'm just curious. This kind of guy. Yeah. The motor was cold last time we checked the compression. Let's just see what it looks like. Hot. See how the cylinder walls look. I've had it apart enough that I know if any damage has been done. And honestly, I haven't driven this sled enough this year or used it enough to do anything. So I'm going to use my fancy tool here to get the rest of the coolant out. Because it is so awesome. Even after it was at 265 and I shut it down, started it right up and drove it back in here. Let's take a look-see. I'll just pop them off, then we'll bring a light in. Nothing.
Looks just like it did. Still see the, I think you can see this cross hatching still in there. Give me a, I'll take that. I don't see any chipping of anything, you know? I don't, uh, that's clean too. It's amazing. Everything is the exact same as it was the last time I had it off, which was just at the start of the season. And the last time I did it before then was the end of last season. And I think I did it one more time before that as well. Well, there you go. God, you know, this old XLT is awesome. I know all you skidoo lovers out there are going to hate it, but even a skidoo lover loves the sound of one of these triples. So all I have to do now, put a new head gasket on, put it back together, and I don't, maybe chuck this motor in a, in a land. These are original, or no, any indication that I had from the previous owner was they never did a thing to this. So there you go, our little test of the Evans waterless coolant. It's kind of scared the bejesus out of both of us, the cameraman and myself, when we were running it that long. We're <laughs> looking at each other like, oh boy. So we're pretty darn impressed. I mean. You know, I don't want to prove that this motor wouldn't last with normal 50-50 coolant in there at running even at 220 degrees. There's going to be an issue. I shut this down at 265. We pulled the, uh, I put the belt back on it and then I pull started it again. No resistance at all in there, like nothing was binding. Started it right back up, came back in. It was still at about 260, 255 or 50 degrees. Look, my advice to you, if you've got a sled that you really care about, pull all that old coolant out of it, get this Evans waterless coolant in it. If you're rebuilding a sled or building a project sled, a mod sled, put the Evans waterless coolant in it. Everything's flushed anyway, you know, there's, it's all dry, it's a dry system, it's perfect to start running that coolant in it. If you run into an issue, as you can see, man, you know what, if we had forgotten to put a clamp on or something chafed through one of those hoses. There was no pressure in that system at all. Pretty amazing. Anyway, I gotta thank you guys for watching Power Mods. I'm Louis Skibo. Don't forget to check out evanscooling.com. Thanks for watching.